Here at Wonderstruck, we think electric motors are brilliant. Now, the trouble is they can be a little bit complicated. So what I'm gonna show you how to do now is make a simple one yourself. Now, this is probably the simplest electric motor you can possibly make because the only components it needs are a strong neodymium magnet, a piece of wire, a screw, and a battery. This is a double A, you can use different sizes if you like. And all you do to make the motor, stick the magnet onto the bottom of the screw. I've just drawn some lines on mine like that so you can actually see when it rotates that it's moving. Then, because the screw is now magnetized, you stick that onto the bottom of your battery like so. And then to make the whole thing spin, you carefully, you can do this with tape, carefully just press one end of the wire down on the top of the battery and touch the other end to the magnet. As I hope you can see, this is spinning incredibly fast. Now these will spin at up to something like 10,000 RPM, but they don't produce an awful lot of torque, so they're very easy to stop. But how does it work? Well, this little device is actually called a homopolar motor. And although it's actually quite simple to build, it's quite complicated to understand how it works. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but basically what happens is, obviously you've got your battery, your wire, your screw with a magnet on. Now, firstly, the reason we can get such very high kind of rotational speeds is there's very little friction between this and the battery because the screw is just hanging from a tiny point uh, and obviously it's the magnetism that holds it there so very little friction there so it can move very fast now for it to move there actually has to be a force acting on it and that force is generated by the interaction of the magnetic field of the magnet and the magnetic field which is actually caused by the current running through this wire through the magnet through the screw back into the negative terminal of the battery. So those two magnetic fields interacting produce a force which causes this, which we could, I suppose we could call the armature, to spin around. 